So we're going to start off with computing the integral of tangent of theta d theta. And here's how we're going to do that. So we're going to rewrite the integral of tangent of theta d theta as the integral of sine theta over cosine theta d theta. Now we can actually do a u substitution. So if we let u equal cosine of theta, then du is negative sine theta d theta. Right? So we can rewrite our integral here as the integral of 1 over cosine theta times sine theta d theta. This sine theta d theta is negative du, right? Because sine theta d theta is negative du. Okay, it's and then, 15. thank you, 1 over cosine theta turns into 1 over u. So our integral here is equal to negative the integral of 1 over u du. It's 20, 15. Thank you. So when we integrate 1 over u, we'll get the natural log or the absolute value of u plus constant. Remember that u is equal to cosine of theta. So we can rewrite this as negative natural log of cosine theta, absolute value, plus c. And there's one more thing we can do. Remember this negative in front is the same as negative 1 times the natural log of cosine of theta, absolute value. And we can use our properties of logs to write that negative 1 as an exponent. So we'll have the natural log of cosine of theta to the negative 1 power. But what does that mean? That means take the reciprocal, so we'd have 1 over cosine of theta, absolute value, but that's just the absolute value of secant theta. So we've got natural log of that plus a constant, natural log of that plus a constant. So this is another way for us to write our solution would be to say it is equal to equal to the natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus a constant. Okay, let's move to the second example. The second example is how do we find the antiderivative of secant theta? This is the integral which requires a little trick. So here's the trick. The trick is instead of, so you might be very tempted to write it as 1 over cosine of theta d theta, but not helpful. So the trick, in fact, is to multiply the top and the bottom by the same factor, and you're going to multiply the top and the bottom by secant theta plus tan theta. So you sneak this into the integrand, okay, d theta, sneak it into the integrand, and now let's go ahead and expand. So in the numerator, we'll have secant squared theta plus secant theta tan theta. And in the denominator, we'll have secant theta plus tan theta. And all of this d theta. Now we do our u substitution. So we let u equal secant theta plus tan theta. Then what is du? Well, we need the derivative of secant theta, and the derivative of secant theta is secant tan. So we'll have secant theta tan theta plus, now what's the derivative of tangent theta? Secant squared. So plus secant squared theta. And then don't forget all of this is multiplied by d theta. And that's exactly our numerator, right? So we, in the numerator, we've got secant squared theta plus secant theta tan theta, d theta. So all of this turns into our du. And in the denominator, we've got u. So this is equal to 
the integral of du over u, which when we integrate is going to give us natural log of absolute value of u plus a constant. But remember, u is actually secant theta plus tan theta, so we'll have natural log of absolute value of secant theta plus tan theta plus a constant. So, the best way to, you know, you're not expected to figure out that you need to multiply the top and the bottom by the same, right, by the same factor, and that factor is secant theta plus tan theta. You're not expected to come up with that on your own. You are expected to be able to remember, oh, secant theta, the integral of secant theta, d theta is natural log of absolute value of secant theta plus tan theta, d theta. Sorry, plus a constant.